both, uh, Stephen and Jason, for taking the time to talk to us today at the Christian Beat about your new music. Um, so I wanted to to uh, talk about Rafa first, and I, I, you both co-wrote that, if I'm if I'm not mistaken. Um, so I'm just curious, looking back, if there's any moment of either the the writing or the recording process that kind of stands out to you now as kind of a pivotal moment, but you didn't maybe realize it at the time, but um, just kind of impacted the whole process. When we were getting together every Wednesday mm -hmm. and doing live writes. So we were going live on like Instagram yeah. and Facebook and different stuff like that and just writing in front of an audience, in front of people. And that's a very interesting thing to do. It's kind of like, and we're just being very real about it. But um, in that moment, we just started talking about, when we're writing music, it's never, uh, um, I personally am always like, I'm trying to write something that I need to sing. Right. Not that I'm trying to teach only. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like something that has to be, I really need to sing this, like till it goes from my head to my heart, like so I start to actually believe it. So, um, you know, for us, Jason, I think he said, "Man, I feel like he God as a healer is a big thing right now." And that was really it. I started asking myself, "Okay, I know God heals. Um, I've seen Him heal. Uh, you know, I was a meth addict and radically, you know, healed from a life of addiction. But I've also seen people, you know, die from cancer and all this stuff. And it's a very real." conversation but i think for for us it was like but we need to declare who he is despite what we see you know what i mean because yeah. he hasn't changed <clears throat> even though there are times where i don't see the thing i i want to see <laughs> does that make sense there's even a lyric in the song where we were like okay we got to get this in here yeah. and it was uh we're leaning on your power you'll do what can't be done either now or forever we know it's going to come and it was kind of like our way of addressing the whole, hey, what do, you, what, do you, what do you do when you don't see it? Has God changed? And I think when we were recording the song and everything, the, this kind of a big conversation we're having right now uh, kind of hit us. We were like, oh, this is an important conversation to have. And it's not one that's solely you better have enough faith to be healed or something's wrong with you. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Or... Um, he doesn't do it at all. And there, it's it's not as black and white as that. <laughs> and, and, and for no us, pun intended. Yeah, right, right. <laughs> um, and, and there's so many different styles of healing, if I say styles, but so many different types of healing. Mental health, you know, people are dealing with that. I, I One of our uh, church members I found out last night who was prominent in one of our, uh, one of our campuses, um, he uh, he killed himself. Yeah, you know, and he was he had PTSD. Yeah, you know, so you know, there's so many different types. And I have a friend who's one of our MDs who's traveling back and forth right now to um, uh, Baltimore to get treatment because he has a rare uh, type of cancer. But he's pressing his way, playing at the church every Wednesday, every Sunday through his sickness. And this um. Uh, feel free to jump in if we're yeah. just like no, you're steamroll. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um, you know, you know, I, I think too. You know, something we don't think about is that we're coming out of two years of a pandemic, and um, you have a lot of people um, that don't realize that they're struggling with depression that is starting to come out in some really, especially in teenagers and young adults. Yeah, uh, that is pretty prevalent and. Um, God is, it's real. It's all real. And he really is peace. He really is a healer. He really is a restorer. And um, there isn't a cure-all that comes from man <laughs> for, right. for stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah. No, it's funny. I was going to actually ask what you hoped or how you hoped this song would impact others because it, it talks about a message that is so complex. You know, it can be you know, distilled down to, you know, healing and different things, but that's something that, you know, <laughs> isn't the same and doesn't always look the same and has so many different pieces to it. I, it was, I was curious how, how you hope that this would kind of inspire or, you know, lead others through that impact. I mean, at the end of the day, you, you don't want people to, I mean, I, we don't, 
it's not just about people hearing a song. It's about people actually listening to it and like going, wait a minute, the, I, I think I'm starting to get to know you, God, like who you are. Somebody said to me once something that sounded really confusing at first, and uh, I'll explain it when I say it. Uh, it says, do you want to know, do you want to be healed or do you want to know the healer? <clears throat> and I went, what the heck does that mean? Uh, <laughs> what's the difference? You know? And, uh, and I was like, this is like, no, do you want just a total utilitarian exchange like this? Uh, I'm just in this, I just want something from you. Not, I just want to love you for who you are and get to know you for who you are. Not just what I'm going to get from you. That was something that kind of really kind of eye opened. And I know that it sounds like a cop out, but it's not. Hmm. You really get to know him. And that's our real hope. Like people that are, they hear a song that's great. But the biggest slam dunk for any Christian or songwriter or worship guy is you disappear. And people are like, wow, God, I see you. I'm, I hear you. And I'm getting to know you through this. Absolutely. I'm curious, since since you, you've um, had the connection with this song, and it's also, you know, been out there and listeners have been able to have some connection themselves, has there been a lyric maybe that stood out to you as, as you kind of, when you wrote it or you first encountered it, you kind of meant it more one way, but it seemed to take a, a little bit different life of its own now that it's out there and others are being able to put their experiences and their, you know, thoughts and impacts behind it? I would say... Um either now or forever, we know it's going to come. I think that that's, you know, uh, the phrase and the sentence in that in that song that has stuck with us the most is, okay, if you don't get healed now, forever and eternity, you will be healed. And look at all of the, all of the different ways God healed in the Bible. You know, Jesus healed different, all the different times. There was different ways he brought it, uh, brought about healing. So, um, just to encourage all of the listeners and everyone that is, is that this song is blessing that um, it could come now or it could come forever. But the fact of the matter is, is you get to build a relationship with the one who heals. You know, it's crazy is uh, we released the song on um, July 8th, mm-hmm. which was uh, the birthday of one of my really close friends, one of my wife and I's really close friend. And this was not on purpose like I had no idea that it was her birthday actually <laughs> and uh, she had been diagnosed with cancer and this was on her birthday that the song released and three days later she died and um, I literally played the funeral <laughs> like just last Sunday right and uh, talk about a lyric that you didn't know was going to be so personal for you Mm -hmm. that you were going to be going, Oh my God, I'm glad I wrote that. Jeez. You know what I mean? This is like, I mean, I don't, you know, it's crazy. And that's the reality of this stuff. You know, it's like, uh, this is all really short. (laughs) It's out of turn, really short. And, um, just sometimes the Lord's like, you really see, his hand on things um, because I couldn't have planned that out. I wouldn't have planned that out, right? <laughs> and uh, it's like, um, so yeah, I would say that that's probably the most, one of the most impactful lyrics I've ever written, we've ever written. Absolutely. On accident. You know what I mean? Like <laughs> not knowing, oh crap, oh my gosh, I really needed that, you know? Right. Sorry. No, 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 for sure. And I, I'm, I'm curious. Um, you also released a music video, a performance of of the song, you know, in addition. And I'm, I'm curious kind of why it was important to you to have that visual component of, of you doing that in addition to the actual song um, for putting that together. I mean, <laughs> it's as simple as sometimes music doesn't exist if there's not a video. <laughs> it's so dumb, but it's true. I mean, we just, I mean, there wasn't a deeply like, Oh, this is why we got to do this. It was, hey, we just want as many people to hear this song and to encounter this song as possible. And the best way to do that is to make a video. And it's, uh, you know. And the corporate part of it being a corporate worship piece. For yeah, sure. To where everybody can sing it, everybody can declare it. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, 
Jehovah Jireh, Jehovah Rapha, Jehovah Sitka, Jehovah Rohai. You know, you, you have all these names. So then it also pricks the people to me that want to know the attributes of God. Mm-hmm. Okay, well, they, they're talking about he's Rapha. What, what, other, what other attributes are there of God? You know, and how can we get to know him? Mm-hmm. And I think that's what's happening. I, it, it's, okay, he's the healer, but he's also these other things. Mm-hmm. This is so cool. John, uh, throughout the Gospels, Jesus, you, you hear this constant phrase of, well, a perfect example, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that believes in him, shall not perish, but have eternal life, everlasting life, it says. And it says this over and over again through the Gospels, this thing we should want. And then in John 17, 3, Jesus like tells us what it is. He's praying for the disciples, and he says, I pray that they would have eternal life, which is to know you, the one true God. Yeah. Knowing him changes everything. And what I mean by that is you can know about me, but not know me like my wife knows me and my kids know me, right? Mm -hmm. There's a different intimacy there. And you apply that to the Lord, and then you don't second guess about who he is because you know him. You really know him. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm also curious... For, for your collaboration between the two of you. Um, I'm, I'm sure you've gotten the question multiple times of, you know, like, well, you know, what the collaboration brings out, you know, that, that but I, I'm curious, you're continuing to collaborate with each other. It's not, it hasn't been a one-time thing for, for each of you and then you kind of moved on. It's, you're continuing to grow this, you know, continuing to, to uh, bring more music throughout the collaboration. So I'm just curious, you know, why why you're continuing to choose to do this together, I guess, um, if that makes sense. That's a great question. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it oh, my you, God. You mean, we can, you mean we can stop? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, this is my brother. You know what I'm saying? Um, it, and it's, I feel like this is what God wants us to do. You know, it's kingdom. You know what I mean? Like we talk about all the time, it's not me, him trying to make me be who he is and me not trying to make him be who I am. It's us being who we are in the kingdom and coming together and allowing God to create through us. You know, and it's fun. You know what I mean? We're having a great time and I get to worship with my brother. I get to praise with my brother. We, we, We have conversations about all types of stuff. You know what I mean? Where he calls me and says, hey, Jay, I need to vent. I can't say this. And I'm like, hey, Steve, I need to vent. I can't say this. You know, it's an actual brotherhood. And it's, it's, it's um, I think it's very organic with what God is doing with us. And why not drop music, you know, and we sound great together. So, you know, <laughs> <laughs> it's fun. If it wasn't fun, we wouldn't be doing it. <laughs> <Absolutely. laughs> like, well, see you later. Yeah. Uh, no fair. No, it, it's because it, you definitely are, are you bring different things to the collaboration, you know, but you, you're you're bringing it together and, and creating something that you couldn't necessarily create solely either. So so it's it it's a it's a great collaboration. Don't 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 hear me say that it isn't, but it's uh it's it's uh it, you know awesome that you're continuing to do we'll the collaboration. Be like, man, what broke up the thing you guys were doing was an interview we had with. Uh, with right. she, she pointed out that we could stop. Right. We were like, oh, okay. Yeah, perfect. Stop. Great, great to hear that. <laughs> you, you know what? When, when are we really paying attention at times to what God really wants us to do? Yeah. In our lives, or are we doing what we want to do? You know, this happened out random. We live like 10, 15 minutes from each other, and I, you know, I didn't know we were that close. <laughs> And then I bought a house and I'm still close. You know? <laughs> so it's like God was like, no, nah, y'all, this is destiny for you all. Mm-hmm. This is a part of your ministry. Yeah, you had your you have your own things going, but this is something that I want to do through you all together. And we're allowing him to do that. Yeah. And we we're gonna keep going until he says, All right, that's all right, that's enough. You know, I, which I hope he don't do, you know, but but I mean I, I, he will always be my brother and and, and this is I mean, God is just doing some incredible stuff, so uh, we love it. Absolutely. I'm curious, you know, obviously you both mentioned that you need to have that 
her personal heart connection to you know, the, the the messages and the work that you're doing but but where are you currently drawing some of your inspiration for what you're working on now <laughs> perfect you hear that he just, he just, he just held up a bottle yeah, uh, look, with no with no, no saying anything you hear that <laughs> no I mean are we really singing and saying what the Lord wants to say Mm -hmm. yeah. Or are we just searching for a good song that can go number one? Yeah. You know, I mean, no, we want to sing what he wants to say. Yeah, and I, you know, I mean, we both love, you know, people, gospel, we love worship, we, we listen to stuff like that, but I couldn't point out one thing that I feel like I draw from, because mm -hmm. it really is just, oh, let's just get together and see what God does, you know? Absolutely. What about what about musically? I, I mean, I think we talked a little bit about the, the meaning behind it, but are, is there anything that's kind of moving in you musically that um, you feel some, some inspiration from recently? I mean, we just do what we feel, honestly. Uh, I mean, like, I mean, we listen to all different types of, you know, genres, you know, we pull from, but I, I just think we just do it like we, we did the choir sessions mm -hmm. and we got ready to work on highest praise. I was like, I, I, Steve, we was trying to pull the choir. I was like, I don't think this is a choir record, you know, and then we respect each other enough to say, OK, well, let's work it like this. And then now we're moving into more of the worship piece. We just going with the flow mm -hmm. of what God and we don't I mean, not to say it like this, but we don't care, you know, you know, we just we just do what God gives us, and you know, people. I definitely, we definitely aren't going. Oh, this looks like it's doing well. We should do music like this. You know what I mean? It's like I guess, uh, you know, I mean, there really isn't a style of like an artist or a band that I'm listening to a lot right now, and that sounds terrible, but yeah. I, I, it's just not. Uh, you know, uh, I do love what God's doing with Maverick City. I do love what God's doing with. Uh, in the gospel world, I listened to an artist. I don't know if you've heard of him, uh, Jason Claiborne. He's really good. <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. Uh, but for real, I mean, it's just kind of it's very it's very organic, you know. No, absolutely. Um, and I know that we're getting you know close to time, but I, I am curious, kind of, what's next for you both? Um, what you're most expectant for and looking forward to in the rest of this year? Yeah. Well, we've. You know, we just released Rafa, mm -hmm. and we've recorded a total of eight songs. So we'll be releasing singles throughout the year. Okay. Uh, we have another one coming out that we wrote with our friend Kate Thompson um, that is coming out in um, September. And then, you know, Christmas stuff, and then the rest of this, the rest of this batch. You know how it goes. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> and so we're just we're just continuing. You know, the plan is it to. A lot of people used to be you release a record and then you wait two years and you release another record. We live in a place of creativity with the Lord. And so this is ideal for us to be in this place where we can just continuously create with the Lord and release stuff. Yep. And uh, so that's what we're doing. It's just, uh, just, you know, flowing with you, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, again, I just wanted to thank you both for taking the time today. I've, I've enjoyed getting to talk and, and hear more about, you know, your, your connection with each other in the music. So I appreciate it. Uh, oh, thank you. Thanks for having me. Thank you so much. Yeah, absolutely.